Timmy Joe reviews anything. Reviewing computer parts on YouTube. That's Woo! Right. You gotta be pumped on that, right? Well, computer parts! Woo! Oh, yeah. Hi there, I'm Sick Pants, and I'm gonna here to talk to you about computers. All up on the internet. How's it going, guys? My name's Timmy Joe. Flipping around an FX processor. We're gonna talk about bottlenecks on the FX series. Been giving it a bad rap for a while now. Uh, you know, especially on my show, New Plebs Try to Sell Things and Stuff on the Internet. Uh, and uh, it's come up recently that, uh, you know, some FX 8350s, like the one that's on the test bench here, paired up with like 1070s and being sold at premium prices. And I make fun of that to no end. But just how bad is the bottleneck on an FX series processor these days? Especially, we're talking about the 8 cores today. I have a uh, 9590 in my hand here that is dead. It just doesn't work, so we'll flip around. We'll have a lot of fun with it. Uh, but the one we're uh, actually using is the you know mid-range or the mid-between, the 8150 and the uh, 9590. We have an 8350 here, FX processor, 8, eight cores, uh, you know, debatably eight cores but yes eight cores nonetheless even if they do share some resources and they're not quite the same as the cores on intel from their processors at the time but uh this is one of the best case scenarios nice little test bench uh viewer donated the motherboard cpu and ram uh we have it clocked at 4.8 gigahertz on an octo hd 15 some real fast memory some 2133 so this is a pretty good best case scenario so we'll take these, uh, you know, results a little bit with a grain of salt, but of course we paired it up with Radeon 7. Radeon 7 on an FX series motherboard. Isn't that just kind of weird? Um, it is, but how bad could it be really? Like, a, you know, essentially a t uh, 1080 Ti or a RTX 2080 level of performance on an FX series processor kind of makes you cringe, doesn't it? But we're going to check her out today regardless and see just how bad that bottleneck is at 1080p and at 4k so that should be pretty fun so we're just doing a little round of time spy here and uh you know this uh, as i said overclocked 4.8 gigahertz pretty best case scenario here ish there is a little bit better scenario you, you could have but uh, i'm going to be comparing this versus threadripper at 4.3 gigahertz uh the 2950x and i know that's not the best system to be comparing it to you probably want to more so compared to an Intel, like a 9900K or something like that, uh, you know, or, but, you know, for the, the better of the IPC or, or I should say, you know, per core performance, but that's the one I have and that's what we're going to compare it to today. So what is the best consumer CPU, you know, from AMD's FX line-ish? How does it compare against Threadripper at 4, 1080p and 4K with a Radeon 7? It's going to be fun to check out already done a bunch of benchmarks and we'll just see how bad it is as we finish up with 12 fps in the cpu benchmark in time spy we'll see just how bad it compares to the same graphics card on threadripper now now yeah it's, it's moving it's a little slow leave it alone all right so it gets a 7262 with a graphics score of uh, 8650 and a CPU score of 3805. And if we just go here, this is the same graphics card on my Threadripper running at 4.3 gigahertz. Uh, it gets an, basically 2200 points total less in the benchmark, which is pretty crazy. Now, yes, it has you know a, a lot more going for it. Four times the threads, the Threadripper, you know, because it's ripping threads, but uh, we see the CPU score 12,573 versus what, 30,805 Jeebus. But this, the graphic score is not that far off 8,650 versus uh, 9,000. Yeah, so it's about 350 ish, 400 points off in the graphics department. So this system definitely slows this GPU down. Uh, and, you know, while we're on the subject here, I'll switch her back. Uh, we'll just see how bad she does in Cinebench, because you always got to do a Cinebench run, right? You know, if you're not familiar, we'll just let her run through its paces. But, uh, you know, I, I think I personally have had bad raps with these because I've, there's definitely frame time issues and some pretty bad gaming issues with the first generation 8150. And I've built a few systems and sold them and had customers come back 
complaining of like real bad frame time issues in uh, Fortnite and stuff like that. But you got to keep in mind, if you're running one of these, it's a power hungry chip and it's got to have a good motherboard, a good VRM, and you can't just expect to put one of these in one of the crappier motherboards for this and get the same kind of performance you would like on a high-end one, like the Sabertooth Revision 3, one of the best FX motherboards you could, you know, pr pretty much run this test with. So just keep that in mind. There are definitely some bad reasons to use an FX, and if you have a cheap motherboard, you might as well throw it out and get a better one or move on to a whole different system. So... 745 in Cinebench, and you know, that's a, a good Core i5 4 core, like from Skylake, will get that overclocked, you know. So, half the threads and an i5 from recent memory can beat this thing pretty much, but you know, not, not that bad, you know, de definitely not that that bad considering, uh, you know, uh, I think a 3770 i7 stock won't touch that score. It gets like 650, so, you know, not bad. But then, again, Threadripper will get 3,700 in Cinebench. So, things have come a long, a long way. Yes, yes, my friends. So, uh, yeah, it's an 8-core, you know, just four, it has a 4 gigahertz uh, base clock, 4.2 gigahertz. There are definitely better versions of this that they move up in range, 8350, 8370, 95, 90, you know, stuff like that. But they're all pretty much the same processor, so... Within variance, we can kind of talk about the bottleneck they're going to have. So let's go ahead and uh, load up these benchmarks, and then we can truly see how bad the bench or the bottleneck is when benching Radeon 7 on FX versus Radeon 7 on Threadripper 2950X. Cue up them benchmarks, Timmy Joe. What'd you think? Not quite as bad as you thought it was gonna be, right? Like, it was still playably high-end, 60 frames a second-ish, you know, uh, t within, you know, depending on the game, 10 frames a second off, but the 4K performance <laughs> on this system, I was blown away that I was seeing the frames I was. Like, the biggest variance is the Far Cry 5 obviously has a lot more CPU, it's, it's way more CPU driven because, you know, you go from, uh, what, uh, 70 frames a second at 1080p to 68 frames a second at 4K. 
So obviously, the, you know, the, there's not that much difference when you switch the resolution and all the power goes on the, the, the graphics cards. So uh, I was surprised, you know, how the 4K was, or the 1080p didn't get up into the 100 frames a second on Far Cry. And then you dropped it down to 4K and it was like, or dropped it up to 4K, I should say. And, uh, you know, it, it was still around 60 frames a second. It's like kind of weird. But uh, the majority of those benchmarks kind of show that the variance at 1080p, yeah, for sure. But you can use a high-end graphics card on FX and still play in 4K, or most certainly 1440p. And it's kind of changed my idea of what kind of graphics card you can pair with an FX system and still kind of get away with it. Now, the games I chose are all new. You know, I tried to pick games in the last six months to really see the bench, you know, the bottleneck, I should say, coming from this thing on, like, the newest kind of games. And the fact that it wasn't nearly as bad as I thought it would be tells me you could put a 1080 or, you know, or a 1070 or a, a Vega 56 on the FX and still have pretty good performance as long as you've, you know, you have a pretty good example like I do here. You know, some crappy motherboard with a bad VRM is going to be a different story. But, you know, set up the way I have it now, it, I think the max graphics card you could really get away with would be like a 1070, 1080, or a Vega 56. And it wouldn't actually be that bad an idea, which just totally blows my mind. Like, they, they did fairly well, uh, you know, the FX paired with the, the Radeon 7. I was definitely anticipating way bigger of a variation. So, obviously, the FX is going to be much worse than a 9900K, uh, probably 20 to 25%, if not more, depending on the game and what have you, when paired with a high-end graphics card. But even with, you know, Ryzen and, uh, you know, the current offerings from AMD, the, uh, it, it can kind of hang with it, the FX. And I was not expecting that whatsoever. So, I think the conclusion is here, I've been given FX way too bad a rap, maybe the actual first gen bulldozer would be a little bit of a different story i know that it, 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 the first gen like the 8150 has more issues than the the second gen and the, the pile drivers and the whatever when what, what have you but fx not as bad as you thought and you can literally pair it with a high-end graphics card and still get away with it as probably you know, as long as you're overclocking and know what you're doing so i'll have to change my opinion a little bit fx not so bad so uh, i'm going to try and get a quad core i5 from you know around this time like uh, a 4570k or something like that or a, a 3570k and i want to see in these games now you know putting it with a high-end graphics card what can you still do well with just four threads because i think the fx series might eventually actually take over and be the better buy over a just straight quad core i5 that's you know not quite as good as like skylake so you know sandy bridge and ivy bridge were always pegged as such a better buy than an fx series processor i actually think that the i5s from that era where it's just four cores four threads versus this this might actually overtake it eventually, and that's a, you know worthwhile to check out in another video. But I'm out watching me Joe Instagram and Twitter, and FX, just like not as bad as I thought it would be. And if you pair with a high-end graphics card, you can still get some real decent frames. And I think the only stipulation with that would be like some heavy online games. You're going to see you know frame dips and stuff like that. But you know as we saw in Apex Legends, it still did pretty good. We were at 59 frames a second uh you know at 1080p so i think at 1440p you know in a 1070 you could online game you know even with a higher refresh rate monitor and still do well with an fx series processor and i'm just blown away by that so i guess i'll have to change my opinion i will see you guys in another video if you have any uh you know things you want to uh you know give me ideas for in the comments below for what else we could you know do a versus on you know the fx versus sandy bridge ivy bridge i think that's a good one i'll have to get that one going but uh i'm a little bit sick horse i'm gonna stop yelling at the camera fx not so not so bad who'd have thunk it